Uh-oh, the rail button fell out of this rocket. How do I repair this? That's what I'm going to cover in this video after this short announcement. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I want to cover how to fix the problem where the rail button comes out of the rocket. Now let me uh, make this a little bit shorter here by pulling this off so I can show you what's going on here. Now on this rocket, this is a Mad Cow kit and it's a Mad Cow Patriot. Um, and it has these rail buttons here which are a little bit different from the rail buttons that we use at Apogee Components for our kits. Uh, we use a three-piece rail button where this is a two-piece and the main difference is this part here, which is called a weld nut, which is typically glued on the inside of the tube so that the rail button can't be pulled out. Um, this kit, um, I built it several years ago, so I don't know if things have changed, but if you have an old kit around and it, it, the rail button falls out, uh, this is how I would repair it. Um, so now this one here, it was just tack glued in there um, and it wasn't in the bulkhead because the bulkhead's right here. And so this is a little bit forward of it. Uh, normal, normally the manufacturers tell you to put the rail button right in the middle of the, the bulkhead. But you typically have the same problem where it can come out. So I want to fix this. Um, incidentally, the rail button here on the front is a much easier fix because it's just a hole and I can actually get my hand on the inside. Um, and so what I recommend here is to take some epoxy clay and so the post fits inside the tube and so if you just put epoxy clay on the, on the bottom side it will hold it in because you can't rip it out because the, the clay gets into the threads and it's really strong. Now there's two kinds of epoxy clay that we sell here at Apogee Components. We sell the Fix-It brand and the Bond Aid. Now the Fix-It brand, the difference is this takes a full 24 hours to cure, where this is cure in less than 20 minutes and it's hard in five. So this doesn't give you a lot of working time, this gives you plenty of working time. So my rule of thumb is if it's on the outside of the rocket, I'm using this because then I can smooth it out and feather the edges really nice. But if it's on the inside of the rocket where nobody's going to see it and it doesn't, you know, I don't care how it looks, I'm going to use the Bond Aid. Um, and this is easy to mix. You just take an equal glob of each part, and mix it together, and just, and just smoosh it on the inside. But here I've got a problem because I can't get on the inside. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drill a hole here in the back. And then I'm going to put epoxy in through that hole. Now there's two ways to do this. If you're going to use the Apogee um, rail buttons with the weld nut, then I need my hole bigger in diameter than that weld nut. And that's a little over a half inch circle. So that's a pretty big hole. And I want to try to make my hole as small as possible. So in this case, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go with the original rail button. Um, and I'm going to use a different type of epoxy. I'm going to use rock epoxy. Now this is more liquid than the clay, but more firm than liquid epoxy, like a five minute epoxy. So this, I can pour it and it will kind of stay in place. Um, where liquid epoxy, if I pour it in, it's just going to run all over everywhere. So this is what I'm going to use for this task. So first I'm going to drill my hole. And I've got a drill here, and I'm trying to do this upside down so that you can see it. So I'm just going to put my hole right here. All right, so that's a pretty small hole. And I think that should be big enough for what I want to do. Okay, so now um, I'm going to tack glue 
with super glue, I'm just going to put it back into its original hole. But you can see here, I've got another hole right next to it. Um, so when I pour epoxy in there, I don't want it coming out that hole. So I'll put a piece of tape over it to keep the epoxy on the inside. Um, so for this, I'm just going to use some thick super glue. And I'm just going to put it on the bottom of the rail button itself like that. And I'm just going to ram it back into the hole. And I've got some super glue accelerator here. And I'm going to wipe that off. Okay, so it's mostly staying, and that's all I need. I just need it because all the strength is going to come from the epoxy. And I'm going to go ahead and mix this up, and this is a 50-50 mix. So uh, let me go ahead and mix that up, and I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, I've mixed up the epoxy. Um, and it has the consistency of warm peanut butter. So it will pour, but it mostly wants to stay where it is. Oh, and I'm looking at my hole here, and I'm a little bit off, but that's okay. I can still feel the um, post from the rail button by sticking this on the inside. Now I want to take a piece of tape and cover up the hole here. Okay. And then when this is cured, um, I will have to sand that down. So this is a repair, and repairs are never perfect. So it is going to leave a little, little rug rash. Okay, so I'm going to try to pour this in here. I think I'm going to actually use the dowel because I'm doing this kind of upside down. If I was standing it up on the floor, I could pour it much easier. But since I'm working here upside down for you, I'll use a wood dowel. I got a little thinner wood dowel, but that's okay as, as long as I get most of it in there. See, I could do like I could drip it like this. Okay, so I think I got enough in there, and I'll just clean this off here. And then I'm just going to lay it horizontally like this while it dries. Um, and this is probably going to take, um, it's a good hour for it to become stiff, um, and then I can clean up some stuff. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and let this harden, and then I'll be back after this. Would you like a booklet of rocket plans like this one right here? There's 25 rocket plans that we're giving away when you subscribe to our Peak of Flight newsletter. Now this is totally free and the best part is you get to be a subscriber to the newsletter. But in the plans you'll get artist renditions of the rockets themselves. Let me see if I can find you one of those. Uh, plus you get, um, there's a rendition, plus you get a blueprint drawing of the rocket. Um, fin patterns and decal patterns, plus instructions on how to build your rockets. So if you like that, subscribe to the Peak of Flight newsletter and we'll send this right out to you. Okay, the epoxy has hardened. Um, I can flip it over and I can test it, make sure it's nice and hard. Um, I can peel the tape off and let's see what's underneath. I did have a little bit ooze out right there. It's not too bad though, but this is in really good. That's not going anywhere, so it's now permanent. Um, this little piece right here, I can try to trim it off with a, a knife. If that doesn't work, you get out your files. Um, I 
have some uh, these files right here. And you can just file down the excess epoxy that came out. So you just have to be careful doing that. But you get the idea. You just file it down. Now the hole here on the back, um, you can leave it. Um, it's not really hurting the rocket at all. But if you want to fill it, um, I'm going to use some of the fix-it epoxy clay. And I have already pre-mixed it. And you can just take a little bit and just shove it into the hole. And then trim it off. And then let this harden. It's always harder to do it upside down. I hope I'm not blocking your view. <laughs> um, it's a little harder because you got to be careful not to push it too hard or you're going to create a little divot on the inside. Ideally, you want it to, to uh, stand up a little bit, a little bit of raised area so that you can sand it off later. Okay, so that's what I'll do. I'll just wait until that hardens and then hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. And now my rocket's good as new, ready to fly it again because my rail button is now permanent. Um, if you like this video, please let us know. Down here on YouTube, you can leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions about this technique, give us a ring. Um, our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.